Hello everyone. Welcome back to our online lecture series. So in today's lecture, we'll be learning about the glycolysis pathway. So this glycolysis is nothing but a chain of reactions which will convert the glucose to pyruvate. So in this process, what happens? The glucose will be converted to pyruvate. So here it involves, uh, there are you know, 10 steps which will convert the glucose into pyruvate. There are 10 chemical reactions. So this glycolysis process will take place uh, inside the cell inside cytoplasm uh, like uh, the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain those will also take in uh, takes place in uh, inside the cell but they will take place inside the mitochondria but this glycolysis process will take place outside the mitochondria in cytoplasm this glycolysis uh, pathway will take place so this glycolysis is also called as the Emden Meyerhoff and Parnas pathway it is very important to remember this name because sometimes in exam they might ask you that uh, instead of asking the uh, instead of asking like uh, explain the steps involved in glycolysis they might ask you that what are the steps involved in Emden Meyerhoff and Parnas pathway so that is why it is very important to remember the other name so now we will see what are those 10 steps which are involved in the conversion of glucose to pyruvate. So here you can see the first step. So this is a phosphorylation reaction. So phosphorylation reaction means whenever the addition of phosphate groups takes place that is called the phosphorylation reaction. So here you can see in the initial step it was the glucose. So in this reaction glucose is getting converted to glucose 6 phosphate. One phosphate group is getting attached at the sixth carbon of the glucose molecule so that is why we call it as glucose 6 phosphate so what is the enzyme that is being used for this uh, reaction here the hexokinase enzyme which is involved in the catalysis of the phosphorylation reaction so <clears throat> in the second step if you see this is the isomerization reaction so what is happening here so the glucose 6 phosphate is getting converted to fructose 6 phosphate so if you see the both the structures so the molecular formula remains same but the only difference is these two are the structural isomers so here the isomerization process is taking place so what is the enzyme here it is getting inside where that is converting the glucose 6 phosphate to fructose 6 phosphate that is phosphoglucose isomerase so on what basis they had given the name of this enzyme because it is doing the isomerization reaction on the glucose 6 phosphate so here it has two functional groups one is glucose and second one is the phosphate group so that is why phosphoglucose isomerase it is very easy to remember the if you remember the initial substrate so it is very easy to remember the enzyme name also so in the first step also it is hexokinase why it has been given the name hexokinase because hexa means six so if you see the glucose it is a six membered ring and it has six carbon so that is why hexokinase kinase means which will do the ATP hydrolysis that is what we call hexokinase so whatever energy that is required for the phosphorylation so phosphate group that is required so that phosphate is coming from the ATP ATP is getting hydrolyzed and uh, that uh, it is forming the ADP and that phosphate group is at getting attached to the sixth position of the carbon of the glucose so that is why it is forming the glucose 6 phosphate and second step it is converting the glucose phosphate into fructose 6 phosphate with the help of phosphoglucose isomerase and if you see the third one so third third step if you see this is also again the phosphorylation reaction so because again it is being the phosphate group is being attached on the molecule so that is why we call it as phosphorylation reaction so here also where from this phosphate group is coming so from the ATP hydrolysis so ATP is getting converted to ADP plus PI so that phosphate inorganic phosphate and that phosphate is getting attached at the first carbon of the fructose 6 phosphate that is why we are calling it as fructose 1 6 bisphosphate bisphosphate means there are two phosphate groups that is why we are calling it as bisphosphate and those two phosphate groups are on the first carbon and on the sixth carbon so that is why we call it as fructose 1 6 bisphosphate and uh, what is the enzyme that is uh, getting utilized in this one where the, that is catalyzing, catalyzing the re reaction that is phosphofructo kinase because this substrate if you see this is a fructose 6 phosphate it is having one fructose molecule and one inorganic phosphate so that is why paspo fructo kinase so what is what it is forming it is forming the fructose 1 6 bisphosphate so here if you see the fourth step 
so that is basically a cleavage reaction what happens here is that in the first uh, the substrate fructose 1 6 bisphosphate which is a 6 carbon molecule so that 6 carbon molecules will be converted into will be broken down into two molecules which will contain three three carbon atoms so it will form one glyceraldehyde three phosphate which is which is having three carbon atoms and one dihydroxy acetone phosphate this is also having the three carbon atoms so this will this is a cleavage reaction this, this fructose one six bisphosphate will be broken down into glyceraldehyde three phosphate and dihydroxy acetone phosphate so what is the enzyme that is being used here that is aldolase so this glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate directly can continue to the next step but uh, the dihydroxy acetone phosphate so this directly it cannot enter into the next step so for that purpose so we are uh, there is another step here that is uh, step 5 so in this step 5 what happens that uh, this enzyme triose phosphate isomerase so this will convert the dihydroxy acetone phosphate into glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate so if you see here this these two are the this is isomerization reaction so this enzyme is converting the one isomer to another isomer in the first one dihydroxy acetone phosphate if you see that is uh, having the carbonyl functional group and in case of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate it is having the aldehyde functional group so these two are the functional isomers so whatever the enzyme that is converting these isomers from one form to another form that is triose phosphate isomerase so this glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate so from now onwards so whatever the molecule here I am showing it will be having two two molecules because each molecule of fructose 1,6-bisphosphate uh, is giving two molecules one di dihydroxy acetone phosphate and one glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate so this dihydroxy acetone phosphate also is getting converted to glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate so here it will be having three glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate so in each step uh, even though i have shown only one one molecule so it will be two molecules each okay so this glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate again it will convert into in the uh, sixth step it will convert into 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate so what is the change that is being happened here <clears throat> so there is a dehydrogenation reaction so dehydrogenase reaction so in dehydrogenation what is happening so it is removing the hydrogen from the glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate right so along with that it is adding one phosphate group to the molecule so that is why in the next step whatever the product that is forming that is one three bisphosphoglycerate so here bisphospho that means two phosphate groups are there because already initially it was there one phosphate group was there and along with that in this sixth step one more phosphate group was added so that is why it is forming the bisphosphoglycerate so <clears throat> next step that is step seven so what is happening in this step seven so this is the opposite reaction to that of uh, reaction 1 and 3 there what is happening one phosphate group is being attached to the molecule so that is what we said phosphorylation reaction so ATP was getting consumed and it is forming ADP and along with that it is attaching the phosphate group to the uh, molecule substrate molecule but here so in this step uh, step 7 so that phosphate group is taken back from the molecule so in that way it is converting the that phosphate group is going and attached to the getting attached to the ADP and it is forming the ATP so here ATP generation is taking place so that ADP is getting converted to ATP and along with that 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate is getting converted to 3-phosphoglycerate because one phosphate group has all been, already been removed so this kind of ATP generation is called the substrate level ATP generation why substrate level ATP generation or substrate level phosphorylation why substrate level because already we have discussed that uh, ATP is nothing but the energy currency of the cells so here energy is getting generated so where from that energy is coming so whatever the substrate so 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate and 3-phosphoglycerate so if you see compare these two molecules 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate will be having the higher energy compared to the 3-phosphoglycerate so whatever the energy difference is there so that excess amount of energy so that is being added to the ATP uh, or ADP in the form of phosphate group so because of that it is converting the ADP to ATP so that energy is being stored in the form of ATP so this is the energy generating step in case of first and third reaction those are the energy consuming reactions because their ATP is getting converted to ADP and that energy is being utilized by the 
reaction but in case of seventh step that atp uh, adp is getting converted to atp so whatever excess energy is there that is being stored in the form of atp so it is generating the atp from the adp so if you see the eighth step so this is all three phosphoglycerate so here in this eighth step 3 phosphoglycerate is getting converted to 2 phosphoglycerate so what is happening here so if you see the molecular formula these two molecules are having the same molecular formula but the only difference is that the phosphate group is at the third carbon at the third position in this 3 phosphoglycerate and if you see the 2 phosphoglycerate this phosphate group has been shifted to the second carbon so these are the positional isomers so this is the isomerization reaction and uh, what is the enzyme that is being used used here phosphoglycerolutase so this enzyme is converting the 3 phosphoglycerate to the 2 phosphoglycerate these two are the isomers so in step 9 so the step 9 is nothing but a dehydration reaction so removal of water molecule so here what happens this 2 phosphoglycerate if you see the structure at the third position ch2oh is there so what it does it will take out the oh from the third carbon and h from the second carbon so it will take out the water molecule and it will form a double bond this is an elimination reaction or dehydration reaction so whenever you do the elimination reaction in organic chemistry we know that it will form the double bond so in the same way here also elimination process is forming the double bond at the in between the second and the third carbon so whatever the product that is forming that is phosphoenol pyruvate so in case of 10th step what is happening so here the enzyme that is being used is the pyruvate kinase in 10th step so this enzyme con is converting the phosphoenol pyruvate to pyruvate so here also dephosphorylation is taking place so that means this whatever phosphate group is there on the phosphoenol pyruvate so that is being removed and already i discussed in the step 7 so whenever phosphate is being released so that phosphate will go and attach to the adp and it will convert the adp to ATP so adenosine diphosphate to adenosine triphosphate because another phosphate group is being added and here also phosphoenol pyruvate is having the highest energy higher energy compared to the pyruvate molecule so whatever excess energy is there so that is being stored in the ATP so this is the the final product here is the pyruvate so this is all about the glycolysis cycle so which shows the conversion of glucose to pyruvate with the help of 10 enzymes so in 10 step process so this is all so about if you if you can remember the structures that is fine otherwise you don't have to worry about the structures here so i'll show you one more picture of this glycolysis cycle like uh, this one so here i have shown you the names so at least in your exam if you write at least these names that is more than sufficient so you will get full marks so don't have to worry for that uh, if you can remember the structure that is fine it will give you a good impression to the examiner otherwise uh, at least try to remember the names of the substrates and products and along with the enzymes and like this uh, the conversion like ATP to ADP and also the, at least this slide you have to remember if they will ask the uh, in exam at least if they will ask about the glycolysis cycle you should be able to write the, this uh, cycle and uh, each and every step you have to explain in detail so try to remember the structures otherwise just forget about it but at least try to understand the uh, reactions with the help of the structures but in exam at least try to write all these reactions and substrates and products so that's it uh, so in next class we will discuss about the Krebs cycle